Wednesday night here. And as usual, we're doing a midweek episode of Wayward Guns Rewatch. Joffrey Curry here being joined by my lovely co-host Kate. And with the uh, Baby Demon cameos coming to a continuation. What's up, BV? Hey, she's all excited. Because I'm awake still. Oh, God. All hell. Uh, Sounds like that's a negative. This is our bedtime. This is our normal bedtime. We're supposed to be in bed by now. Because normally we go to bed, go to sleep. Well, and from... gets... Judging from the bug-eyed look on your face, I guess she just watched the episode with you. Oh, I mean, we watched it yesterday, but yeah. <laughs> oh, see, you beat me because I just finished watching it like nearly just before we went live. So, yeah. I'm behind the times. It's okay. I mean, I've seen it like five times, but you know. <laughs> oh, wait. Let me kill that banner because show will begin momentarily. No, show has already begun. And tonight, Wayward Guns Rewatch is covering episode five of season one of Supernatural. This episode entitled Bloody Mary. Uh, like I said, blah, blah, blah. hold on a second. Like I said, Bloody Mary. And, uh, yeah, I can only imagine what this episode is about, Kate. What about you? I mean, uh, that's, you know, a little self-explanatory, but, you know. Oh, you oh. would think. I mean, think. I'm pretty sure we've all in our younger, dumber days uh, <laughs> partaken in a dare game of Bloody Mary. Mm. And, and I'm going to apologize to the fans watching this tonight. Tonight's episode may be a shit show because this is my second bottle of wine. Yeah. I, I cracked the first bo- I cracked the first bottle at about six o'clock. It's 8 30 where I'm at. So two and a half hours. I'm on my second bottle. Bottoms up, bitches. Good lord. <laughs> uh no. Good Lord had nothing to do with this. It had to do with the fact that tomorrow is a national holiday, Thanksgiving. I hope y'all are ready to get <laughs> fat tomorrow with the engorging on your turkeys. I forgot that uh, the night before Thanksgiving is the biggest night for people to go out and get drunk. I forgot. That's a that's a known fact. I think it's the third biggest night. No, I, I, I think it takes. I think it. I promise I you. I think the night before Thanksgiving takes. It shocked me because I was like, it's not even that big of a holiday, but people go out and get drunk. So more people get <laughs> fucked up for. Oh, well, there's our one per episode. I just blew it. My bad. <laughs> I'm sure between me and Kate, this will... <laughs> I, I'm sure between me and Kate, this episode will definitely earn an NC 17 rating. So. Especially with me being drunk and Kate being Kate. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me more people go out and get pie-faced for Thanksgiving than they do for New Year's or St. Patty's Day when everyone's Irish? It's, it's, it's known, as, belief. known as Blackout Wednesday. I don't, uh, Trust me, it is hard to believe. Well, but. The, <laughs> well, if that's the case, I'm halfway there. Just saying. I don't I don't I don't get it. I really oh. don't understand. Like you're getting with family, I get that, but you do it for Christmas, you do it for New Year's, you know, you do it for Easter, but you ain't good. I mean people get drunk on those holidays, but Thanksgiving the night before? I don't I don't understand. I just I don't get it. But call oh, blackout. That sounds weird to me. <laughs> Anyway, I'm about to give a moment of unplanned product product placement here because I'm going to say this. I have been struggling the past few days because I've made the switch from smoking after a 
whether it was human error or not, a bit of a scare at fire class last week. I've given up smoking cigarettes. So instead, I switched to these things right here. And let me tell you, these elf bars are a godsend. Oh, yeah. I, I, get, I get flavored vapes with low amount of nicotine. I don't know what the nicotine content is. I don't know what the nicotine content in this thing is, but it's been helping me not smoke. So we'll go with that. Anyways, we're going to dive into this because um, Kate's been calling me a Boy Scout for my research on these episodes and for the notes I've been taking. Well, tonight, I don't know if you can see this or not too well with my lighting, but yeah, these are my notes just on the episode uh, recap watch through. Uh -huh. Although, and at this, trying to like get back to the page that I had for Bloody Mary. Obviously, the only things that are coming up are a whole bunch of Bloody Mary ingredients and drinks. And now I'm like, man, a Bloody Mary would be delicious right about now. That would have been so perfect. Uh, look at the screen. So I know. I should have made a. Are you looking at the screen, Kate? Yeah. I should have made. <laughs> And I was at the store before. Her Anyways. Uh, well, that's two for this episode already. Oops. Anyways, I'm going to jump right into doing the episode recap. Kate, cut me off at any point if you have anything to add to this. No, go. But the episode starts with a cold open in scene. That is apparently in Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, Toledo, Ohio. Big town. Let's get excited there, Vivi. <laughs> yeah, it's a slumber party where the girls are playing truth or dare. Uh, the one is dared to go in the bathroom and play, say Bloody Mary three times. We've all done that. We've all been there. Man. But the difference is. In Supernatural, as opposed to real life, uh, upon saying Bloody Mary three times, a spirit appeared in the mirrors and windows and attacks the father of the girl who says it. Uh, cuts, you see a pool of blood in the bathroom and his elder daughter coming in screaming because she found the body. Cuts to a scene of Sam having a nightmare of Jessica in the back to the Impala as the boys are sitting outside of a morgue. Dean brings up an obituary of the death of a Mr. Schumacher, which, by the way, I'm slacking here because I forgot to mention the uh, proper credits for this episode. So let me do that real quick. This mm. episode, Bloody Mary, it aired October 11th of 2005. So, yeah, we're right on track 17 years ago. Directed by Peter Ellis. Writers, story by Eric Kripke, teleplay by Ron Milbauer and Terry Hughes-Burton. Guest stars for this episode. Brief shots of Adrian Palicki playing the, at this point in the series, excuse my burp. At this point in the series, deceased Jessica Moore. Marnette Patterson as Charlie, the main uh, guest star in this episode. William Taylor, or William S. Taylor, as the detective that covered the previous case over in Fort Worth, Indiana. Chaylon Summers as Jill. Christy Marsden as Donna Schumacher. Shoemaker, however they pronounce it in the show, I can't remember. Uh, James Ashcroft as the coroner's assistant. Duncan Minette as Stephen Shoemaker. Michael Teagan as a teacher. Genevieve Buchner as Lily Shoemaker. Uh, Giovanna Burke as Mary Worthington or the Spirit of Bloody Mary, and Dan Shea as one of the policemen that gets knocked out. Anyways, back to my notes. They Sam has a nightmare of Jessica in the Impala at in front of the morgue. Uh, Dean shows an obituary of Mr. Shoemaker, uh, and the they go in to see the corpse. They pose as those Ohio State med students as their cover story. Ohio State being a big college in the city of Columbus, Ohio, which is the capital of the state. By the way, I worked there a couple weeks ago. It is a bustling city. I loved it. 
Uh, the desk clerk is giving them a hard time when they ask to see the body. Sam bribes him. They are examining the corpse and see that the eyes have blown out. The theory for the medical staff is that he had a stroke and the capillaries blew. Yeah, okay. Good luck with that one. Mm -hmm. uh, they then turn around after speaking with the coroner's assistant and the deceased home during his wake. They claim to have worked with him. Cover story gets blown by a friend of the deceased daughter, but this is only after the daughter informs the boys. Uh, the daughter, Lily, informs the boys that <coughs> they were playing Bloody Mary and Lily admits to saying it three times. Uh, they point out that the legend only attacks the person who said it, but this case is different. Uh, the friend of the daughter, Charlie, becomes suspicious, interrogates the boys, and they explain that they're looking into his death. She's suspicious because apparently Mr. Shoemaker was a day trader and worked alone. Uh, they cut to the library where the computers are out of order, so they're going to have a harder time doing research. Charlie calls her friend Jill after this saying that she's suspicious about the Bloody Mary game. Jill says Bloody Mary into her mirror three times. She begins to undress and get ready for bed in the closet and you see Bloody Mary in the mirror. You also see this girl Jill decked out in a t-shirt and panties. And let me tell you, Jill is a hottie. Not gonna lie. We, uh, Chaylon Summers, Chaylon Simmons. Uh, she is killed the same way as Mr. Schumacher. You see the spirit in the mirror. This time the spirit says that Jill killed that boy. Sam has another nightmare. Dean reports his, the findings of his research on the deaths near a mirror. Uh, as they are figuring out that the two victims were killed near mirrors, so they're trying to figure out more about it. Um... Charlie calls, uh, sorry, this is after the first killing. Charlie calls Sam after Sam had given her her number outside of the bathroom during the wake when they were trying to look into it. Uh, meets the boys near the park. Dean at, asks for her to help them get to the bottom of this and find out what's actually going on. They go to Jill's house. The boys are looking through, and they de Sam has the idea of shining a black light on the back of the mirror. There's a handprint there, and the name of Gary Bryman. They look into it and find out that Gary was an eight-year-old killed in a hit-and-run by a black Toyota Camry. Charlie informs them that Jill was the driver. At this point, they have a thought to go back and check on the Shoemaker house. They find handprints, the same handprint, on the back of the mirror that was closest to Mr. Shoemaker's body when he was killed with the name of Linda Schumacher, Shoemaker, whatever. Yeah. They question her, their eldest daughter at this point, Donna. And Donna claims that her mother OD'd on sleeping pills. Donna then tells them, get the hell out of her house where they look at Charlie. And she says that, <laughs> What do you think? Do you think Mr. Shoemaker had something to do with it? They then find on researching research of mirrors and handprints and whatnot, the same handprint on another mirror that was owned by a Mary Worthington of Fort Wayne, Indiana, who was murdered at the age of, age of 19. She was a beauty queen and her eyes had been cut out by a knife. Uh, by her handprint on her mirror, she had written the letters T-R-E, pointing that that might have been her murderer. Uh, Dean asks where the body's buried, because apparently they were thinking of salting and burning it, but they find out she was cremated. Awesome. Charlie cuts to a scene of Charlie talking to Shoemaker's daughter, Donna. Donna decides to be a smartass and says... Bloody Mary in the mirror of the school bathroom. After this, you cut, follow Charlie around, and she's being followed by the spirit through windows and mirrors. Uh, 
Sam and Dean find out that the mirror was sold to a shop in Toledo. Dean wants to find it and smash it. As they are driving back towards Toledo, Sam gets a frantic phone call from Charlie because she has noticed that she's being followed by the spirit. They get back to Charlie's house. They have her in her bedroom. Sam covers all reflective surfaces, tells her not to move, and asks, Dean asks what happened. Charlie reveals to them that her ex-boyfriend killed himself at, upon their breakup, and Charlie's last words to him were, go ahead. Not thinking he would actually do it, he does. This is Charlie's uh, indirect or direct, whichever way you want to look at it, murder. Which they is a common link here. It's anybody that has a link to somebody else's death, whether being directly or indirectly responsible, is the ones that the spirit is chasing. Uh, as the boys are leaving after setting Charlie up, Sam says he wants to summon Mary to her own mirror before smashing it because he views that as the most likely way to end the spirit. Uh, Dean says, so who's going to summon the demon? Sam volunteers to. At this point, there's a nice brotherly moment between Sam and Dean where Dean tries to reinforce to Sam that it's not his fault what happened to Jessica. And Sam tells him there's more to it that Dean doesn't know. Dean says, what? Sam says, well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret. Dun, dun, dun. They get to the shop where the mirror is, find the mirror, and Sam says Bloody Mary three times. While they are still scanning for Bloody Mary to show up, the police get there before she does. Uh, Dean goes out to deal with the cops and try to get them, talk them away. Funny moment where he says he's the shop owner's kid, and the cop says, so you're Yamaguchi's kid? Uh, well, Dean tries to play that one up. You cut back inside to Bloody Mary getting a hold of Sam. Uh, you see him starting to bleed from the eyes, and you're thinking, oh, hell, Sam's about to get it. Uh, at this point, Dean knocks the cops out. You show Sam starting to succumb. Dean shows up with Sam and smashes the mirror. As Dean is starting to carry a limping Sam out of the, build, out of the store, you see a now corporeal Mary climbing through the frame. Dean knocked to the ground. Now his eyes are bleeding for some reason. Grabs another mirror and shows Mary her reflection. She sees it. You hear the mirror demon telling the corporeal demon that you killed all those people and Mary liquefies. The spirit is gone. The boys take Charlie home. Sam tells her the boyfriend wasn't her fault and she needs to move on. Dean looks over at Sam and says, maybe you should take your own advice. The boys drive off into the sunset. And that is the brief episode description of episode five, Bloody Mary. Um, if you want an idea of how creepy this is, this is Dean as the boys are getting ready to freaking eat it as he shows Mary her own reflection. Yo. Um... Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to change pages, but that was the episode summary. Was there right. anything I missed since I know I just went on for like 12 minutes straight? No, you're, you got it. You got pretty much all of it. <laughs> Trying to. You got to admit, uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to these episode recaps, I'm getting better at this every week. Oh, yeah. What is this? I'm still trying to find like good, mm. good, like. Well, There's... before we move on to that, I'm going. To... I'll give you a couple minutes here because I'll jump right into the next part of this, which is my favorite part of doing the show. Music yeah. analysis. Now, looking at a. Afterwards, after watching the episode, I looked for the music credits for the episode. I found three songs that stood out. However, I think one of them might have been a replacement when they moved it to Netflix for the first series because 
I could not find it upon watching the episode twice. Oh, the, uh, uh, really? I'm wondering if it doesn't replace... I'm wondering if it doesn't replace one of the two songs that I did notice. Because I noticed two scenes with two really good songs. Uh, the first one, which doesn't really count as classic rock, but it's popular enough rock that I'm going to let it slide. The song Sugar We're Going Down by Fall Out Boy was played during episode after Jill says Bloody Mary while, she, while as I mentioned before, the haughty alert panty shot. <sighs> Sorry. Um, but after Jill says Bloody Mary gets off the phone and is getting ready for bed and like dancing away because she's just being your typical your typical turn. Uh, that's all, folks. Uh, as Jill is partying away and getting ready for bed they uh, before the attack, Sugar going down by Fall Out Boy Place, which I think is great timing. Which I think is great timing for that song to play because realistically, she just said Bloody Mary. And well, Sugar's going down. Oh, it was. I will talk, talk to my cousin later because that's another Running Force Productions. Running Force Productions. A member of the staff who's involved with the broadcasting of the sports coming up. Anyways. That song was played in great, and the next song that I what? I'm just laughing at you. That's all. Keep going. Jeez, leave my what? drunk ass alone. The other song that I did catch going through this episode was surprisingly, CW got the rights to a Rolling Stones song. Laugh, I nearly died. Which was ironically played at the end of the episode as they're driving out of town while Sam is actually seeing, uh, you know, whether they're hallucinations or if it's actually Jessica's spirit on the side of the road as they're pulling out of town. But it's great timing for that song because this is after Sam and Dean are having a burst moment where Dean's like, all right, now that Bloody Mary's gone, you mentioned there being more story about what happened with Jessica. What's going on? Sam looks at him and says, Dean, you're my brother. I love you. I would die for you, but there's some things I need to keep to myself. And looks out the mirror with a smirk. Ah, Vivi. Mm -hmm. We are okay, tired. Are we actually We're on tired. computer tonight. No, I'm on my phone. Does your phone have a headphone jack? No. iPhone. Damn. Damn. Anyways, the reason I'm saying it was great, the song Laugh, I Nearly Died, is great because they have a moment of levity in the car as they're driving out of town. Right after Dean saves the day and gets Sam away from Bloody Mary, smashes the mirror, traps the demon, gets the demon to go away, yada yada. And come on, laugh, I nearly died. So which one? I don't know what else to say to that one. The third song that I could not find upon a double watch through that I, I don't know if it's because my mother called while I was watching the second time trying to find this song and I just missed it or if it's on the Netflix version but the third song of cla of cla classic classic because fallout boy but rock that's supposed to be in this episode is rock of ages by Def Leppard it's definitely not I don't know if Netflix. maybe that replaced the fallout I don't know if maybe that replaced the fallout boy song during the Jill's death scene or what, but I couldn't find it, so I don't know how it was supposed to have been used as a storytelling device. Yeah, you know what? No, I'm going to be, after this, I'm going to actually look and um, see what was playing, but I feel like it wasn't it wasn't either one of those, though. It was something, something like you said before, like with the Netflix, they just kind of threw songs in there. 
I feel like it was just something that makes me right. wonder if that didn't. That makes me wonder if Rock of Ages might not have been what they threw in to replace Sugar We're Going Down. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to jump ahead to the score. Vivi, you're tired. Go to sleep. Oh, when there's there's lights on, we're talking, we're we're doing this. She's not going to go to sleep. Good point. You can't have my glasses. I'm sorry. Anyways, moving on to the skirt magnet scorecard. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, I think this is another score for uh, no skirts. I'm trying. Yeah, no, it really, yeah, neither one I mean, really got that. Yeah, besides that, was, that I think that, it would have been uh, creepy if they had because because Charlie was still in high school and she was the closest skirt to the situation. So uh, I'm going to give that an update to a currently through five episodes. Uh, Episodes, episodes, episodes. Jesus Christ, I can't talk tonight. It might be the bottle and a half of wine that I've been through tonight. I don't know. But through five episodes, I'm quite surprised because as we had briefly discussed before going live, I had expected with Jensen Ackles being Dean and the fact that he's the... He's the funny, could give a shit less, more so of the brothers. I figured he'd be the one getting tail left and right. But right now, after five episodes, we've got a skirt magnet scorecard score of two skirts to Sam. No skirts gets a score of two. And Dean only has one skirt. So right now, Sam's in the lead. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, like I was saying, just we'll just wait till we get down the road. Those numbers will be everywhere. We everywhere. Please tell, please tell me that at least when we get further through it, that we're not that I'm not going to want to kill myself by seeing Castiel <sighs> leading both of the brothers. What's that? I said, please tell me there is some at least some hope for these writers. And that they don't screw up and have a uh, character that comes in in the fourth season be the biggest squir- uh, skirt hound of them all? Mm. No. You disappeared no. for a minute. Oh. Yeah, no. No. I mean, I, w- I would be okay. Child. I would be okay if Bobby... I would be okay if it comes in and Bobby takes the most skirts of them all, but... I doubt it. Um, Anyways, I've done enough talking in the first half hour hour of this episode. So, Kate, have fun. All right. I'm going to probably, I'm going to, I mean, there's not much. It kind of just keeps, it keeps repeating itself with most of this uh, uh, legends um, for Bloody Mary. So, I'm going to get through this and then. I'm going to have to jump out early because she's just, she's going and I need to get her to bed and she won't stop. Uh, so basically, basically Bloody Mary, um, legends, you know, it's, it's, it's a legend about a ghost, a phantom, a spirit to, to be conjured to reveal the future. Again, this is different. Um, they say that, but then it's a game too, but I guess that game is supposed to be coming from this. So, but I, I, I still, it doesn't really explain how it turns into a game just, you know, for, for girls to play. Like it's crazy, but anyways, it's, you know, basic. She said to appear in a mirror when you name her, her name is chanted repeatedly. It she it appears an apparition appears as either benign or malevolent. Um, they say Bloody Mary appearances are mostly witnessed in group participation play or by a man who is about to die. That's a new one. Baba, chill out for like 
five, ten more minutes. Um, rituals that I found here. Um, historically, the divination ritual encouraged young women to walk up a flight of stairs backward, holding a candle and a hand mirror in a darkened house. As they gaze into the mirror, they were supposed to be able to catch a view of their future husband's face. There was, however, a chance that they could see a skull or the face of the Grim Reaper instead, indicating that they were going to die before they would have the chance to marry. I am not about marriage, but for all y'all who want to be, you know, happy ending and you're all like, oh, when my feet are heavy, that sucks. <laughs> You try to see the face of your future hubby, and then uh, it's just the Grim Reaper. You're gonna die, you know, alone. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, I can think of, I can think of something even worse than seeing the Grim Reaper. There are definitely probably many worse you could, things. You, but I mean, I mean, come on, you could, you, you could, you could try that. I didn't see this ugly mug. I mean, I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think the Grim Reaper would be worse, bud. You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll save that one for later. <laughs> but I mean, again, <laughs> I'll save that for later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For all, all y'all women, you know, who are all about marriage. There you go. That was some of the old days that they did that kind of stuff. So that sucks. Um, anyways, in the ritual of today, the Bloody Mary allegedly appears to individuals or groups who ritual ritualistically invoke her name in an act of catatromancy. I don't know if I said that right, but uh, which is basically divination using the catatromancy. Oh, I think. C A T O P T R O M A N C Y. I think it's catatromancy or something like that. Catatromancy? Interesting. Yeah, I think I think I was I was pretty close, but it's divination using a mirror, um, which y'all see. Well, yeah, whatever. It's something that's brought up with witches later on. Anyways, it's a thing. Um, but yeah, using divination using I'm a mirror. I'm sure it is. Off. <laughs> so this is done by repeatedly chanting her name into a mirror placed in a dimly lit or candlelit room. The name must be uttered 13 times or some specific number. Um, I think it's normally 13. always odd. That's from this one. Um, but it says, or some other specific, specified number of times, which I think when it, when it comes to the Bloody Mary, uh, re uh, repeating her name, it's always an odd number. So it's three... Um, or it's I mean, in threes. Yeah, three sorry. is the most common number. I think it's in threes, actually. Sorry. Normally. This 13 times is... I've never heard this one. Um, the Bloody All Mary right. apparition... Yeah. The Bloody Mary apparition allegedly appears as a corpse, a witch, or ghost that can be friendly or evil, and is sometimes seen covered in blood, hence the name. The lore surrounding the ritual states that participants may endure the apparition screaming at them. When I played it, that's 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 what we thought we saw. I'll tell you what, <coughs> no, I did it one time and I swear to God, I swear to God, something creeped out of this mirror and tried to, oh, yeah, anyways. <laughs> um, so it, it, either her scream, it's she's screaming at you, cursing them, strangling them, stealing their soul, or drinking their blood, or scratching their eyes out. Hence, where you know Supernatural took it. So they took they took that one on. Yes, which they did. Is cool. Um, some variations of the ritual called Bloody Mary by a different name, Hell Mary and Mary Worth, are popular examples. So, using Mary, what, how did which, they, they changed their name? They changed Mary their Worth name actually with, fits in because in this episode it was Mary Worthington. Worthington City. Okay. I knew they, they changed the name up a little bit, but yeah. So Mary Worth, which I can actually, child, I swear to God. Um, here, let me go. I know that. All she's trying to do is give her thoughts on the episode. 
Um, oh, okay. Oh, um, I, come, I, come, I come down here, okay? So, oh, there's the, stop yelling. By the way, we have to give credit where it's due. What is your source tonight, Kate? Oh, uh, Wikipedia, as always. As usual, um, okay. But yeah, so um, it's how Mary, Mary works. But it goes down in... There's some debate on the identification of Bloody Mary. You know, who, where it came from, who this Mary is. So these are the three that pop out basically out of all the things that I've, any folklore, anything that I tried to find on her. Uh, are these three ladies. A number of historical figures have been put forward as candidates for Mary, including Mary, Mary the First of England, daughter of Henry Oh God! What is that? It's a V one one one. What is that? Numerical. Mary Tudor, daughter of Henry the Eighth. Eighth. Okay, and Catherine of Aragon, um, who had around three hundred religious dissenters burned at the stake during her reign, earning her the nickname Bloody Mary. There is also Elizabeth Bathory, a seventeenth-century um, Hungarian countess. Mm -hmm who allegedly tortured and killed around 650 girls and women bathed in their blood and was accused of vampirism. And lastly, mm -hmm. Mary Worth, who has been identified as either a woman who killed slaves escaping the American South via the Underground Railroad or a woman who was burned at stake during the witch trials in the early modern period. Those are the three top and only like Mary background Mary stories that I get. So again, that's I, supernatural. They did take and make a different little story of their own. Cause I guess basically if they would have done, if they would have gone with any of these, they really would have had to ramp it up or they would have just had to like done bloody Mary way later into the season with all these different stories here because you can't do this in the early season. So I see why they probably made it a little more of their story as um, having a, having one of the names from one of these stories at least, but making it into um, basically an angry spirit. Which uh, I enjoyed, honestly. Now, ironically, since you said there's like three main different stories behind the background of the name of the bloody mary mythos yeah uh as i'm looking through here i know i've been a smart ass and been throwing up pictures of the drink the bloody mary but there's also two opposing theories as to where the drink got its name Interesting. Uh, okay. some theories so uh, according to travel and leisure one of the theories is that because of its red coloring and its thick, uh, it, it rich flavoring, the many believe that the drink was dubbed Bloody Mary again in line with what you said about the Mar Bloody Mary myth. That mm -hmm. this one might have actually also been named after Queen Mary Tudor because okay. of her particularly bloody reign over England. Yeah, however. The other more commonly accepted theory is that it was named after the bartender who created the cocktail, uh, who was named Mary Gary at the Bucket of Blood Saloon in Chicago, who created the drink. Okay. Either way, both pretty interesting. Moving on to the next uh, next segment of the episode, uh, in other media, uh, not much. Uh, like I didn't really go as in depth as usual because of the delay on actually getting to watch the episode because I only got to watch it like two episodes, like legitimately two hours before we went live tonight. And when I pushed play on the episode was also the time that I cracked the first bottle. <laughs> but I did find an interesting movie to look at if you want more Bloody Mary. Yeah, I saw that. It um, popped up all over the place on here when I was looking for Earth, like Legends. 
So I'm curious. Oh. Hold on. I got to bring this page back up because I screwed up. Is that a it, the, what you see on screen now, what you see on screen now is the poster slash cover screen for the 2005 movie, Urban Legends 3, Bloody Mary. Uh, it was a direct video slasher. It was directed by Mary Lambert starring Kate Mara. You know, the, the girl who may down the line become the owner of either the Steelers or the Giants of the NFL given that between her and her sister Rooney Mara they have parent their grandparents are both Jason Mara who owns the New York Giants or Art Rooney the second who's the current owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers yada yada really? which by the way by the way, if one of these two girls ends up inheriting the Pittsburgh Steelers, given that I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh, and right now I am a diehard Jets fan who hates the Steelers worse than they hate the Patriots, I might actually not hate the Steelers more than the Patriots. Well. But anyways, it takes place. Uh, la, 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 la. Let me read through this real quick. Uh, it's a different telling of the story. Story of Bloody Mary um, it starts in 69 where three football players drug and kidnap their homecoming dates. The captain's date is named Mary and he chases her into a storage area and knocks her out with a punch, you know, a stiff right hook. Um, he thinks she's dead, even though she's not yet locks her body in a trunk. She dies in the trunk. Uh, fast forward to 20, 2004, 35 years later. Three teens jokingly play the game Bloody Mary during a sleepover. And the next morning, they're all disappeared. Hmm. Uh, after a day, they wake up in an old mill. Uh, most suspect that it's a hoax. Uh, in Or a prank by the school football team in... Uh, response to a negative newspaper article written in the school paper by the one missing girl. Yada yada. Um. Anyways, in this case, yes, it does follow the vibe of the traditional Bloody Mary mythos. Um, I definitely might want to check this movie out later, as should most of our fans, because that's the one thing I'm enjoying about doing this is taking what Supernatural does with these mythos and leading people to watch other movies and films that deal with the same mythos. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really interested, actually. I'm probably going to... Yeah, I'm probably going to watch it this weekend. Is it on Hulu? Is it on Hulu? That's it, yeah. We will have to I'm... find out. Um... If it is on Hulu or on Netflix or on some way that Kate and I can both watch it, this might be something that we do a Wayward Guns rewatch of as a Patreon exclusive down the line, which once I finally, finally get laid off from the job site I'm at, I plan on getting us a Patreon set up. So stay tuned for more info on that, people. What's with that smirk? Oh, I'm just laughing. I'm trying to be a little more quiet now. That she's starting to fall asleep. Yeah, and you're also probably amused at the fact that this is the first time you've been sober and seen me drunk. <laughs> or a few times I was a little sober before I got drunk and saw you drunk. Definitely, yeah, there were. But I wasn't sober for much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think yeah, I think I this is the first time. Oh, for, for me okay, let's complete. be honest here, Kate. Let's be honest here, Kate. Usually, by night's end, you have always been far more inebriated than me, so I don't want to hear it. 
It's true. But I was able to keep a good face on. I had so much practice. It was terrible. I think I'm doing all I mean, I think I'm doing all right. You're not doing too bad. Nah. Mm, I didn't think so. All right. Favorite scene? Oh, gosh, 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 gosh. And by the way, we, we are on episode five. So far, you and I have only agreed on favorite scene once. Honestly. I think the end there where they have a little, like by the very, very end, um, like as he gives her, as Sam gives um, Charlie that, um, uh, oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the, it, the speech about your boyfriend's suicide was not your fault. Maybe you should let go and move yeah. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, um, I'm, I'm trying to think about, find the word. I cannot find the word right now. Um, Sam. Sam giving Charlie closure? Not the closure, but uh Jesus Christ. Why Redemption? can't I think of this word? Huh? Redemption? Not a redemption. Um oh my god. Sam giving I, her I'm, absolution? Um I it's now it's fading away. I can't even remember. Absolution? Oh uh, um advice. Jesus Christ huh. advice as he gives her the advice at the end there. Um, and then, you know, you see them driving off and it's basically and Dean, you can, Dean tells Sam, maybe you should take your own advice. Yes. Yeah. And, and basically like you can see how Sam is starting. It's, it's the beginning, but starting to accept that, it wasn't all his fault, you know? And as Jessica appearing there, I think that's a sign. That was a sign of him finally accepting that. You okay. Know? I That's what I think. She, she was fine. She, she kind of went to, uh, to her piece of sorts because he was finally, finally thinking that, you know, coming to terms that it wasn't all his fault. And, you know, she's appearing like, you know, it wasn't your fault. And you need to be at peace like I need to be at peace. Okay. And you I need to be at you peace. That scene. Peace. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I can see why you picked that scene. I mean, it was good for that reason, and I, I love that scene. But yeah. it was not my favorite. Okay. For some well, reason, I, I'm starting to notice. I'm starting to notice a theme behind what ends up being my favorite scene every episode. But mm. for me, it was it was the scene when Sam suggested luring Mary in her own mirror. And uh, volunteering to be the bait when Dean pulls the car over and has the brotherly talk, like Sammy, you need to let this go. It wasn't your fault what happened to Jessica. Like Sam, yeah. uh, or sorry, Dean, Dean actually being the caring, um, sage older brother giving advice to Sammy. Like for some reason, it's always the brotherly bonding scenes between Sam and Dean that take it from me. Yeah. Um, seven circles of hell rating scale. I can't remember. What did I give the Wendigo episode? Because right now I'd have to say that's probably my favorite. But I'm going to put this episode like solidly seven. in the sixth circle. Like if I'm trying to get people into the show. And giving them good reasons and like good vibes as to what Supernatural is about at least five episodes in. This is one of the episodes I'm showing people to try and get them hooked. 
I'm giving it six circle. It's not completely perfect, but it's pretty fucking good. Yeah, I just earned us the NC-16 for the night. My bad. I uh, definitely... I'm going to go with a five. I'm giving it a so, five. So, fourth circle is neutral. So, you're saying it's... It's it's you're saying it's a fair episode. Yeah. It's yeah. not a good episode, it's not a great episode, it's a fair episode. Yeah. Okay. For sure. For my mind you, um, mind you. Did you have we're going down we're gonna be going down this whole, you know, the whole seasons. There's just so many. That's why like I take into account what I know. So that's how my ratings will go. I already what I already know. Out? Oh, see, my ratings are more fluid because I'm watching this as a fresh fish because I only watched three seasons originally. And even that was like seven, eight years ago. So I don't remember much. Yeah. So my ratings might be more fluid. Like I might go back and say, as an, as a great episode comes up, I might be saying, okay, yeah, that changes the stick. Right, right. But yeah. as of now, yeah. I'm putting it solidly at the at the in the sixth circle. Like this was a good episode. Yeah. Anyways, was there anything else about this one you wanted to discuss? Uh, no, I think that's it. All right. Well, then uh, let me start with the ending speech. Make sure you follow each of us at our personal. Tw- uh, there we go. Twitter. At our <laughs> personal Twitter. Fuck. There we go. Personal Twitter pages. Myself at TJE Joker. That's TJE G E O C U R. As shown on screen here. Kate, you can follow her over here. Damn, this flip flop camera is killing me. Okay, you can you can follow you, Kate over here at at you don't Kayla stop. Carl. C H A I L E E Carl. What? I said you done a good job. You can you can stop trying now. <laughs> Listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. All right, listen, Linda. Uh, that's our personal Twitter pages. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Wayward Guns. And the most important way in the incipient stages of this podcast to help support us, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Running Force Productions. You can find it on you. Just type Running Force as seen. Running Force is one word. Productions. And when you see this logo up here, I can't figure out which way it makes my finger look like it's pointing most directly. All right. Look at your screens. The logo on the upper right-hand side of Kate's head, above her doorway. If you see that logo, yeah. that is the right YouTube channel. Like, like, subscribe, yeah. follow. Watch everything that we've got on there because uh, I'm assuming as this goes on, these episodes are going to be continuously hilarious because she and I, she and I, she and I have known each other for over eight years. Thank and you. if you can't tell, we bust each other's balls a lot. It'll it'll get worse. It's gonna get worse. Excuse me. Huh? I said it's it's gonna get worse. That's for sure. That's for sure. It all depends on how much I piss you off that week, doesn't it? It all depends on how tired I am. <sighs> well, you're yawning now, so I'm assuming you're getting pretty close. Yeah, this child needs to go to bed. I'm popping myself right into bed after her. <sighs> We're normally in bed by now. Yeah, I know. My slacker ass men is go late tonight because... Busy at work. Uh, I mean, I, we get to sleep in. I ain't getting up. But anyways, <laughs> but you gotta get up at five. No, that's normally when I get up. I was like, 
since I don't have to tomorrow. Oh, yeah, okay. Really been. Oh, okay. I, I, I misunderstood because I was about to say, crap. 4.30 is usually my time to get up. Oh, we'll see. You know, you know the but anyways. Name. But anyways, unfortunately, Kate and I have been, were unable to discuss before the holiday came around that we had wanted to do a bonus thing here. We're not going to be able to. We haven't gotten to plan it, so we're going to let that go for Thanksgiving. We might yeah, get something Christmas. rolling for Christmas. Yeah. I think it's on for Christmas. Because be I, I, I think I'll finally be laid off by then. Um, Who knows? Maybe we'll both do the uh, recap of that urban, what was it? Urban, 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 what the hell? Urban Legends Bloody Mary. Urban Legends, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could, yeah. Ooh, by the way, by the way, do you have a smart TV where you're at, Kate? Mm-hmm. Do you have Roku on it? Is it a Roku? Yeah. Good. Go on the Roku channel. There is a great, like, two-season, se uh, limited uh, two-season series that you will love. It is called 50 States of Fright. Um, it is executive produced by Sam Raimi and, mm -hmm. uh, it is broken down into two or three episode arcs covering various horror legends from each state. Um, Ooh. it's like two or three episode arcs. Mm. And like I said, directed by Sam Raimi. And I will say the first arc of the first three episodes, the golden arm, which I believe was out of Minnesota. Mm. There were at it is one of the things I've watched that has actually gotten a legitimate jump out of me. Hmm. I'm gonna have to look into it. Definitely gonna have to look into it. Like that's, that's, that's I, I can head. honestly see once once I finally get some time off and can get a Patreon set up for us, I can see us doing some um I can see you and I covering the arcs of the show. As Patreon exclusive content. Um, hint, yeah. hint, fans. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. I'm um, totally down hint, to hint. doing stuff like that. For sure. Oh, yeah. The the Wayward Guns rewatch will primarily be a Supernatural rewatch podcast. But I can see us doing quite frequently other horror movies uh, rewatches uh, yeah. as Patreon content. Side, little side see, things, yeah. I, I, Side things. I've got a twist. I've got a twist of mind that never stops working, and I think that was a great idea. Uh, I will actually agree. <laughs> then again, that might also be the two bottles of wine talking. But Kate, the lovely co-host who's actually sober, agrees. So I think I did something right for once. We did good. You did good. You're done good, son. You're done good. I like it. You're, you're done good. Anyways. Anyways, covering episode 1-5 of Supernatural Bloody Mary here on Wayward Guns Rewatch. This is Joffrey. And Kate. There you go. Signing off. We will...